Alright guys, how are you doing? It's CK here and welcome back to another Forza Horizon 3 news slash gameplay video. Today we have got some gameplay on the auction house and the map. Now I do believe this was leaked and I just want to thank the actual original uploader for providing this footage for me. Thank you very much man, much appreciated. Uh, so yeah, this looks absolutely awesome. The auction house is back. This is something that we've been requesting from like back in the Forza Motorsport 4 days, that was great when I had it then, but all the games after never really had it, so we're going to be breaking down this footage today uh, individually, I've got all the pictures and everything ready, and trust me, you're going to want to stick around for it, so yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Now as I'm sure you all seen at the start there, we get our first proper glimpse at the BMW M4 Liberty Walk, with brand new rims, now I do believe these are actually Forza created rims, they are ADV rims apparently, but the cool thing about them is, as you can see in this screenshot here, it actually has the Forza logo on it, one in the actual centre and one on one of the actual rim spokes, which is really cool. We obviously get the vinyls and everything at the side, like Liberty Walk, Ubercraft Works, Proswear and Tinks etc, blah 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 blah, it looks insane with these arches. Around the back as well we get that iconic Liberty Walk lip spoiler, along with another custom license plate. I don't know what you guys are going to put on yours, I'm just going to put my gamer tag on it or just like EK or something, because obviously that's what you guys know me by. And yeah, again we have the Liberty Walk sticker, so that is really cool that they've actually brought these stickers into the game as well. And I think they've just kind of borrowed some stuff from Need for Speed 2015 and just finally brought it into a Horizon game. Which is really cool, and we get the two big exhaust pipes. Well, there should be another one as well, considering the fact that there is um, four on the M4. Here's a better shot at the rims right here, guys, and I'm sure you can see that the brake calipers are actually painted gold. So, I think we can actually paint our brake calipers now. I'm not too sure if we could do that already. I think we could, but um, yeah, if it is brand new, then holy crap, that is really, really cool. Really like the style of these rims, yet again, Liberty Walk and Tinks on the side with the big arches. Now this is quite an interesting shot right here. Now, I'm aware that in Forza Horizon 2, we didn't actually get like a proper Forza Vista mode, where you can actually open up the cars and stuff, but this looks like it's going to be it, because in Forza Horizon 2, you were kind of stuck indoors inside the garage and you couldn't really see the outside world, but this time, I'm glad that you actually can, because it just, it just gives it a more colourful vibe, it makes it feel more alive and everything. Don't know what it's going to be like when it's raining, it might be covered up when it's raining, but I doubt it. Um, but yeah, it looks really, really cool, I like it, I like the design, and it just makes it feel more open, especially when you're going to be customising your cars and stuff, it just feels more open and more alive. And here we get the first look at the actual menu, more specifically the auction house area. Now, this looks extremely like the one from Forza Horizon 2, yet again, why would you want to kind of mend something that isn't broken, because it looks brilliant already. So, let's go through the actual, like, bits here. So, we've got hot deals on the left, I do presume that is where you're going to be selling the cars and everything like that. Searches, obviously we're going to search stuff. Uh, start auction, I believe you can just like, start your own auction there and put your own car up for bidding. Auction alerts, now this is probably going to be if you've actually bidded on a car and see if you've won, it'll come up and say, oh you've won, bing bong or something like that, <laughs> bing bong. Uh, but yeah, elite designs, that's probably going to be just like uh, actual like vinyls that everyone's created and you can buy vinyls off of there, which is cool. Now the rare cars, I don't know what they're going to be, that's pretty interesting, might be barn finds or something, not too sure, it's definitely giving that sort of vibe off. Uh, my auctions, I think this is where you can start an auction as well. It's kind of it's kinda weird, I don't know, I don't know why there's start auction and my auctions at the same time. Well, start auction probably must mean like, oh you just go ahead and start an auction, and then my auctions must mean like, you can keep track of them, same with the my bids. And here we get to the proper picture right here, now this is pretty interesting because as you can see in the actual picture to the right, this M3 has arches on it, 
Yep, so this 1997 M3 is one of the cars we could put like body kits on and everything, which is extremely, extremely cool. So I hope, I really, really hope, because someone mentioned this to me on Facebook. Uh, if you don't already know, my favourite car is the Jaguar F-Type and I know it's in the game. I really hope they actually bring like a Rocket Buddy body kit in for that. Ha! Huh, that'll be me for life. That'll be me for life. So, uh, this M3 apparently has two days left in terms of the actual bidding. The highest bid is 100 credits, but the buyout is 150,000 credits. That's pretty mental, man. Pretty mental for an M3, but considering the amount of modification it has done to it, that is pretty good. And moving on to the next one, it is the almighty winged Bentley Continental GT Speed. So, the highest bid so far for this is 180,000 and the buyout is 200,000 so I do believe the car actually starts around about there anyway so it's pretty cool that you can actually make the car cheaper than when you buy it in the garage which is really cool it is really really cool indeed but I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of the big massive wing on this Bentley but it does look pretty damn mean so here we've got an old classic it's the Chevy Chevelle SS454 and apparently no one wants this because there's been no bids on it yet. It has 13 hours to go, but yep, no one wants it. And it's got quite a high buyout price for a freaking Chevelle. One, one million and seventy thousand credits. And then the one that kind of made me laugh. The Ferrari LaFerrari. Highest bid, 80,000 credits. And the buyout is 150,000 credits. That is the bargain of a century right there. Damn. <laughs> That is the bargain, man. I mean, if we could do that with, like, the most expensive cars in the game, oh, I'm glad this is back. I am glad that is back. So the guy in the gameplay actually clicked on another little menu there, which brought this up. Auction options. View seller, view painter, or view tuner. So that is pretty cool. So you can go in, you can view the person that's actually selling it, you can view the person that actually done the design of the car, and you can view the person which done the tune of the car. And maybe if you want to add that person as a friend, you can show their gamer card, or you can view even more in their storefront. And here we have it here, and it actually shows you the amount of downloads that they get in terms of tunes, design, vinyls, blah 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 blah, stuff like that. And this guy is racking up some serious blowing points here, man. Holy moly, 17,000 downloads for designs, tune blooming downloads, 19,000. Wow, man, I cannot wait to get started doing this. I mean, I'm not big on designs, I'm not great at creating them, but I like my cars clean, if you know what I mean. I mean, if there was going to be designs on it, either be like racing stripes or quite a clean looking vinyl scheme. And obviously by pressing Y, you can actually follow the player to get more new stuff from them when it comes out. So that was it in terms of the auction house. Now we get some beautiful, beautiful landscape shots of the Lamborghini Centenario. This one is kind of like going to night time. Then around the front, a storm is rolling in. It's kind of dry right now, but the headlights are still on. And then we can see the road has been wetted, and goddamn, it looks cool. It's love the effects of the water in this game. And the wipers are going and everything. Brilliant. And in the background, we can... I think that's a city. It kind of looks like a city, all them buildings, are, or at least they're very, very high trees. It might be trees, you never know. And then there's one in the daylight. Absolutely beautiful. So now moving on to my favourite thing about the brand new gameplay, the map. Oh yes, the guy actually goes around the whole map and I'm going to be breaking it down right here. So we start with Byron Bay and it kind of reminds me of Nice, just the actual layout in the... And the size of it, it does remind me of Nice. But can I just say before we go any further, this is meant to be two times bigger than Horizon 2. And once we're done, you'll definitely realise that it is. Holy moly, it is big. Now to the right of this picture, you can actually see a path leading off basically to the top of a cliff. So if we can actually properly go anywhere now, there's no limitations, that would be sick. So moving up to one of the main areas in the game, the rainforest. Just look at that, I mean, the size of this is probably like a half of freaking Horizon 2's map right now. Now the rainforest doesn't look like it's got many roads around it, so it looks like it's trying to encourage the player to go off-road and explore what's around on the actual trees and in the actual forest itself. And to the right of the picture, we get the 12, I can't even say that, the Apostles. I think that's meant to be like the ocean or something, it's pretty nice. 
the Great Ocean Road as well, which is there. Just looks like your general area as well. Pretty damn big and pretty beautiful. And then we move on to something from the trailer, which I cannot wait to explore. It is Silver Sands Shipwrecks. That's a tongue twister. Now, we can actually go on to all these wee sandy bits and everything through the water, and all the shipwrecks are right there. As I said, this kind of reminds me of the game Fuel from a few years back, and there was a lot of uh, like wrecked ships and everything there. Looks awesome. And now to one which has really got me very, very excited. It looks like one of the main city areas in the game, Surfer's Paradise. Now, I've seen this mentioned in the comments quite a lot, saying, oh, I wonder if Surfer's Paradise is going to be in the game. And it is, actually. So, there's a lot of roundabouts and everything. There's, like, a massive one right there, as you can see, basically in the, the centre pick. Damn, man, it looks really cool. Uh, so, the city's got bridges and everything, and I think this is going to be the city with the, the monorails and stuff. Looks really cool as well. And then, to the, kind of, like the centre top, uh, we've got West Point Tower. Now I don't want this. I don't know what this is going to be. Maybe like a Vista Point or something. But it's good. We get like the main highway cutting through the centre as well, and some really twisty like hairpin sections up that way. If you can see it, that looks like a good mountain road area. So cannot wait to explore this area. And then it is confirmed there is an airport in the game. Yep. Ooh, oh, oh, cannot wait for this. So this is the Outback slash Dry Reservoir area. And we've got Redstone Airport and Redstone Gold Mine. So I do believe this is where it's going to be all of the dunes and stuff. It definitely looks like that. But look at the size of it, man. Look at the size of it and look what we get to actually go off-road. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. It just... It is just giving me flashbacks of Horizon 1 right now with um, all of the, the Red Rocks area, but we get the Pink Lakes as well, which looks pretty pretty fantastic, actually. Uh, I bet it's going to look really, really good in the game, just like with the sun shining down it. I hope we can actually go up to it, but there does look like a little bit of an outline around it, so fingers crossed we can. Now, there is something behind the kind of like blurry camera pic. It's the best frame I could get, so sorry about that, guys. I don't know what it is, something cobber, cobber something? I don't know, but this area looks like it's going to be, uh, if you're if you're an off-road guy and you like rallying and stuff, this looks like the place for you. Then we move down just a little bit, focusing on the area to the bottom left with the, I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm really, really sorry, so I'm not going to pronounce it just in case I muck it up. Uh, we've got the two valleys, there we go, that's a bit simpler to say. We've got the two valleys with a big lake in the middle of it which looks really gorgeous. I'm a big fan of, like, looking over water and stuff in games. I could just get lost in it for ages. Just all the nice reflections, the water rippling. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And then, uh, is that Marunda? Marunda Dam. So that's the thing that we've seen in the gameplay trailer, like the first one, uh, where they were driving over with the Centenario. So cool. Morton Timbermill is down the bottom as well, so... That's quite good to see a mill in as well. Now this looks like more my area where I'm going to be driving the Marunda Reservoir right next to the dam. <sighs> that lake, that lake though, that is gigantic. Holy crap, man. It's insane now. Uh, yet again, flashbacks to Forza Horizon 1 with the... Oh, what do you call that? Uh, it's the first area where you start up in the game uh, where there's a lake right next to you, next to the little cafe. Looks really like one of the starter roads in that. So that is it in terms of the map. Now we're going to move on to a quick little like demonstration of how you enter like races and stuff. Kind of similar to the ones in Horizon 2, but that F-Type. <laughs> little Easter egg in there for me. Yep, <laughs> I'm only kidding. Uh, but yeah, this is Byron Bay East Suburbs Circuit. So we can choose to do a championship race, an exhibition race, or the rivals race, which is currently locked. And we've got a few events to go through here, so this one is Horizon Percents, Byron Bay Tour, 4 events, 4.6 miles, and we've got the Centenario for that one. After that, a lot of people are going to be happy to see this, the Holden is in. I think that's why they were bringing in so many Holdens to Forza Motorsport 6, kind of teasing us that Forza Horizon 3 is going to be set in Australia. But we get the little Ford Escort as well, right next to it. Looks pretty cool, looks a lot of fun these cars to actually drive. 
And if this isn't a Calvin Harris reference, then I don't know what is. <laughs> it was acceptable in the 80s. No, it was acceptable at the time. Exhibition, Seven Miles, Byron and Yara in the retro supercars with the F40. So, glad to see that is back. That is one of the best supercars ever made. One of the most raw driving experiences that you can get. Now, this to me does look like a showcase event, but it's actually an exhibition event. It's got the sort of name for a showcase event, Running of the Bulls, and we've got the Centenario as well. I mean, at first I wasn't really a big fan of the Centenario, but I am loving it now. I am absolutely loving this thing. And then to the right of it, we have the Sports Utility Heroes Rubbing is Racing event with the Range Rooney Supercharged, which looks perfectly at home on the grass. Now, sadly, we don't have a zoom in for the next pick, but you can see them right here. We've got an event with a Koningsegg Agera called Step It Up Agera, or Agera, however you want to pronounce it. And then there is one with a BMW X6M. There's actually one of them parked just down my street. It is a mean looking thing. Still not a fan of the front end, but you cannot argue with a blooming 560 odd brake cost per SUV. And then for the last couple of frames, we get fantastic beauty shots of the Centenario by the beach. I mean, forget Lana Del Rey getting high by the beach. I want a Centenario by the beach ASAP. <laughs> oh my god, it looks insane. And then we get a close-up of the rims as well. Carbon fibre spokes. Oh, just let me drive it already, Playground, please. I'm begging you, I'm dying here. Oh my god, so that was kind of like the wrap-up of the gameplay of the auction house and the map and stuff like that. Let me know if you enjoyed it in the comments below, guys. And while you are down there, a like is always appreciated. Thank you very much for the support over the past few days. It really does mean a lot to me. And thank you for all the nice comments. You guys are great and I love you all. So expect to see some more Forza Horizon 3 info videos and stuff like that coming over the next couple of days yet again. So yeah, I will see you then, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Peace. Click left for my in-depth breakdown of all the brand new screenshots for Forza Horizon 3 and my commentary over some brand new gameplay as well on the right.